This beautiful beast is the Prusa XL with five swappable tool heads. Don't ask me what I had to do to get this thing. Hey Joe Prusa, I had a great time. Be sure to give me a call whenever the Mark V's ready. Anyway, I have been thoroughly enjoying this machine. Uh, it, it really is quite capable. These tool heads swap out and you can put different materials in each one, including flexible materials. Now from the moment I got this machine, an idea has been bouncing around in my head of doing faux stained glass using transparent materials and solid materials. And if you're just here to see the cool 3D printing footage and the final result, no problem. Just skip to this time right here. I got you. Now for the rest of you that want to see how I went through this process and how the results worked out, follow along. I'm going to show you how I modeled it, some of the quirks inside the slicer, and what the results are like. Alright, let's jump into Fusion 360 and start modeling this out. There's a point in here that is kind of frustrating for me and I'd love some advice on how to do it cleaner and better. Uh, I'll let you know when we get there. Let's jump into Fusion. In Fusion 360, we're going to start by creating the widest piece. I don't recall what I initially did, but let's just say 200 millimeters is the widest we're going to do it. Now let's extend this vertically another 200 millimeters, but we don't want it to be just a perfect cylinder. We want a little bit of a taper, so we're going to do negative 10 degree taper on that. Beautiful. Now to make this into a lampshade, we're going to choose the shell modifier and click this bottom uh, face and do 4 millimeters. Now, it's a perfectly serviceable lampshade or a trash bucket. You could print it upside down like that. That would probably be smart if you did like a little hole on the top. Anyway, now it's time to add the windows. You're going to need a vector file of your stained glass. Let's insert our vector file. Mine is a DXF. And I choose this plane for it to go on, and there it is. Now the process from here forward involves making a lot of copies of things and a lot of cuts and things. So we're going to need a few copies of this body. So we're going to copy this, we're going to paste it, leave it where it is. We're going to do it again. I think I need two of them. If I need more, we'll get more. And we're going to hide two of those. So let's first start with the border around the window, the window frame that sets it out from the uh, window itself, just because that's really easy. So we are going to select this kind of border around the glass and we're going to press pull and we're going to blast it right through the wall of this sucker. Now you might be tempted to project it, but what I've found is when I'm cutting holes with a projection it acts um, uh, in unexpected ways. I don't really understand. So instead of using project, I'm just pushing and pulling. This doesn't have a much of a curve on it, it's not going to distort it much. And what we actually want with this is an intersect. We don't actually want the, uh, the cut, so we say OK. And now we have our window frame. This is going to be the frame around the glass. If we unhide one of the bodies, we can see it there. But we actually want this to stand out a tiny bit from the surface, so I'm going to do push-pull, and I'm going to put 0.5 millimeters on there, so I don't really need to add any support. It can print fine without support, like that. So now it's got a little bit of a ridge to it. But now we have to make the glass. So first we have to make the hole for the glass where it's going to go. And to do that, let's hide one of the bodies and let's unhide our sketch. There's our sketch. We're going to hide our window frame as well. And we're going to select the windows themselves. Now that our windows are selected, we want to unhide one of our solid lampshades, and we're going to again do a press pull. This time we are going to do a cut so that we make window holes. And bam! Now you have window holes. Now, before we start adding windows and things get out of hand, just trust me, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our patterns here. Our, our uh, multiple copies of this. So what we're going to do, let's hide our little window frame. And we're going to go to create pattern, circular pattern. We're going to choose features and we're going to choose this, whoops. 
No, no. We're going to choose just this thing that we cut through it. And then we're going to do axis. I'm going to choose this bottom lip. And we have six copies of this selected. If we look at it from the bottom, we can see that that allows for a lot of space, no overlapping. We say OK. And it's actually going to create that feature in six different places around it. <clears throat> Yay for all the holes. Then we're going to do the same thing with the window frame. We're going to select it. We're going to do create pattern, circular pattern. This body is selected. We're going to choose an axis. We'll unhide this and choose this bottom rim again. And we're going to do six copies. And now we have window pane or window uh, frames all the way around. It's beautiful. It looks awesome. Here's where things get out of hand and here's where I could use some advice if you're like fluent in Fusion 360. We're about to create something like 200 bodies and it becomes really unwieldy in the bodies menu. Uh, if there's some way to group them or really if it was all one body but I could still adjust it later and then uh, Prusa Slicer that would be great. I need to do some testing here. So anyway, this is how we're going to do this. We're going to hide all of these. And we're going to unhide that sucker here in a moment. We're going to select all those window panes again, and we're going to do the thing, the uh, difference. Okay, now we have all of them selected. We find the body that we want. It's that one. We're going to right click, press pull. We're going to pull this sucker all the way through. Bam. But instead of cutting this time, we're going to do this intersect again. And we're going to say, OK. Now we see we have in our left column over here, we have a lot of bodies. And we're about to have a whole lot more. Let's just take a peek at, we'll unhide a window frame and we'll unhide that. So that's what it's going to look like. Now we'll hide that again. And watch this. We're going to select all that. And we are going to create a pattern, circular pattern. Those are selected, which we could do bodies and select those. And then we're going to select an axis. Unhide this, select that axis, six copies. OK. It chugs along for a second. And then now we have these. Let's unhide all of our frames. And there we have it. There is the basics of our lampshade. You need to do whatever, however it mounts to your lamp. All the lamps are different in my house, but that's the basics of the stained glass itself. You can see here we have 200, we have 265 bodies. Yuck. Now, if you export this now, right click up here, do save as mesh and choose one file. If you don't choose one file, you're going to have 265 files, and it's a nightmare. All right. In Prusa Slicer, you are going to bring this in. You're going to go to Split, and you're going to go to Parts. Two Parts. That's what's going to let you have all of your pieces in the proper places, and you're going to have this column here full of parts. Okay? Um, here's a tip for printing the stained glass stuff. Set your infill to zero globally because you want all of your glass to have zero infill or else you're going to see that infill in there when you're using transparent filament. So set your global to zero infill and then in your right column right click on any model that you want to have infill and add infill here. So we've added 15 percent infill to the frame here and you do that for any piece that needs infill. Then you go down this whole list and you double click on each one of these, find out where it is and what color you want it to be and choose which extruder you want it to have for that color. It's a long painstaking process, but once you get them all done and you slice it, you should end up with something similar to this. Now, uh, you can't see the infill because this is black but you can see the parts are all lined up perfectly and the glass has zero infill. Zero infill on the glass itself. That's what you want. Our print time here is one day, 14 hours. So let's take it and go print it.
Now you could totally print this on your bamboo AMS as well. Uh, it would take much, 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 much longer because you have all of the transitions between colors on every single layer. Um, and there'd be a ton of waste, but you could totally do it. And you can download the files down below. I'm also going to include links, affiliate links, for the transparent PLA I got. It turned out beautiful. I really love how it looks. I can't really testify about the company. I'd never heard of them before, but the price was right and the results are stunning. Thanks so much for watching. If, uh, if you have any other ideas of some cool stuff I could do with the Prusa XL, let me know. I'm just kind of enjoying playing with this machine and seeing you know, what kind of possibilities there are with having multiple extruders. Throw those ideas in the comments down below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next video.